Welcome to another episode of Untold Histories, where we uncover fascinating stories from around the world. Today, we travel back in time to explore Indonesia's golden era, the era of the spice trade. Join us as we delve into the remarkable journey of Indonesia's coveted spices that shaped global history. Our story begins in the lush archipelago of Indonesia, a land blessed with abundant natural resources. Centuries ago, Indonesia's fertile soil gave birth to a wide array of exotic spices, such as cloves, nutmeg and pepper. These aromatic treasures possessed a unique allure that captivated the world. Cloves, with their strong, sweet aroma, were highly sought after for their medicinal properties and culinary uses. They were believed to have healing properties and were used to alleviate toothaches, digestive issues and even as a natural breath freshener. Nutmeg, known as the Golden Nugget, was one of the most prized spices of the era. Its warm, sweet and slightly nutty flavour made it a coveted ingredient in both savoury and sweet dishes. The journey to acquire nutmeg was an arduous one, as it was found inside a hard shell, surrounded by a bright red web-like covering called mace. Pepper, often referred to as the king of spices, added a fiery kick to dishes and was highly valued for its pungent and spicy flavour. It was believed to have medicinal properties, and its scarcity made it a symbol of wealth and status. These spices not only tantalised taste buds, but also played a significant role in cultural exchange. Indonesian spice markets, vibrant with colours and aromas, became meeting points for people from different lands. The allure of these exotic spices fueled the desire for exploration and trade, shaping the course of history. Once European traders brought these spices back to their homelands, a culinary revolution ensued. European chefs, inspired by the flavours of Indonesia, began experimenting with these precious ingredients, introducing them to traditional recipes and creating entirely new dishes that would forever change the way people ate and cooked. Indonesian spices transformed European cuisines, adding depth, complexity and a touch of the exotic. From hearty stews to delicate pastries, these spices brought new dimensions of flavour, enticing palates and sparking a culinary renaissance. Each European nation developed a unique relationship with these Indonesian spices. Nutmeg became synonymous with the Dutch, cloves with the Portuguese, and pepper with the English. These spices became symbols of national identity and contributed to the economic and political power of these nations. Indonesia's exotic spices, cloves, nutmeg and pepper, possessed an allure that captivated the world. Their flavours and aromas transcended borders, reshaping cultures, economies and the course of history itself. News of Indonesia's precious spices spread like wildfire, reaching the shores of Europe. Tales of the tantalising aroma and exquisite taste of Indonesian spices captivated the imaginations of European powers. They were spellbound by the allure of these treasures from the East. Determined to secure direct access to these coveted spices, European powers embarked on perilous voyages across vast oceans. They sought to establish direct trade routes with Indonesia, bypassing the existing Arab and Venetian middlemen who had long controlled the spice trade. Portuguese, Dutch, English and Spanish ships set sail, braving stormy seas and uncharted territories, driven by a relentless pursuit of the exotic flavours that awaited them in Indonesia. They navigated treacherous waters, facing untold dangers, all in search of the Spice Islands, the heart of Indonesia's spice production. Eventually, these intrepid European explorers reached the shores of Indonesia, greeted by a land of breathtaking beauty and abundant spices. They marvelled at the lush landscapes and the vibrant cultures they encountered as they forged new paths and established their presence in these distant lands. The arrival of European powers in Indonesia created a fascinating exchange of cultures and ideas. Indonesian merchants, known as the Peranakan, played a crucial role in facilitating trade between Europe and the Indonesian archipelago. They acted as intermediaries, bridging the gap between these distant worlds. European traders eagerly sought out Indonesian spices, loading their ships with precious cargo. The allure of these exotic treasures was so great that they were willing to venture into unknown territories, risking their lives and resources for the chance to bring these flavours back to their homelands. 
By establishing direct trade routes with Indonesia, European powers bypassed the Arab and Venetian middlemen who had long controlled the spice trade. This shift in trade dynamics allowed them to gain greater control over the supply and demand of these valuable spices, transforming the economic landscape of Europe. As European powers solidified their presence in Indonesia, they established trading posts, forts and colonies across the archipelago. The Portuguese, Dutch, English and Spanish competed fiercely to secure strategic locations, creating a complex web of colonial influence that would shape the region for centuries to come. Laden with the aromatic treasures of Indonesia, European ships set sail for their homelands. They returned triumphant, carrying the flavors that would captivate palates, stimulate trade, and fuel the desire for more of these precious Indonesian spices. The race to control the spice trade was fierce. Portuguese, Dutch, English and Spanish ships embarked on daring voyages across vast oceans, all in search of the legendary Spice Islands, the very heart of Indonesia's spice production. The Spice Islands, also known as the Malukas, were a group of islands nestled within the Indonesian archipelago. The most renowned among them were Ternate, Tidore, Ambon and Banda. These islands held the key to some of the most sought-after spices, such as cloves and nutmeg. The Portuguese were among the first European powers to reach the Spice Islands in the early 16th century. Their presence ignited a fierce competition among European nations, each vying for control over these bountiful islands and their valuable spice resources. The Portuguese established a stronghold in Ternate, while the Spanish made their presence felt in Tidore. These two European powers clashed repeatedly as they fought for dominance in the Spice Islands, seeking to gain a monopoly over the spice trade. However, the Dutch, under the banner of the Dutch East India Company, VOC, emerged as formidable competitors. They arrived in the Spice Islands in the late 16th century, driven by a burning desire to control the lucrative spice trade. The Dutch swiftly expanded their influence across the Spice Islands, establishing forts, trading posts, and forging alliances with local rulers. They were determined to break the Portuguese and Spanish monopolies and establish their own dominance over the spice trade. Not to be outdone, the English also set their sights on the Spice Islands. The British East India Company dispatched ships and traders to secure their share of this prized commodity. They established a foothold in Ambon, another key island in the Spice Islands group. The Spice Islands became a battleground for European powers, with the Portuguese, Dutch, English and Spanish constantly manoeuvring and competing for control. They engaged in intense naval battles, diplomatic negotiations, and alliances with local rulers, all to gain the upper hand in the spice trade. Ultimately, it was the Dutch who emerged victorious in this fierce race. Through their military might, cunning diplomacy and economic prowess, the Dutch East India Company established a monopoly over the spice trade, exerting control over vast territories in the Indonesian archipelago. The Dutch ships, laden with cloves, nutmeg and other precious spices, sailed back to Europe, where they commanded high prices and fueled the flourishing spice markets of Amsterdam and other European cities. Meanwhile, in Indonesia, local farmers toiled day and night, carefully cultivating and harvesting these valuable spices. They understood the secrets of nature, passed down through generations, and their expertise made Indonesia the epicenter of the spice trade. While the European powers raced to control the spice trade, it was the local farmers in Indonesia who held the key to its success. Day and night, they toiled tirelessly, carefully cultivating and harvesting the valuable spices that would captivate the world. These dedicated farmers understood the secrets of nature, passed down through generations. They possessed a deep knowledge of the optimal growing conditions, the right harvesting techniques, and the art of preserving the aromatic qualities of the spices. This invaluable knowledge was not learned from books, but was gained through years of hands-on experience and a profound connection with the land. Indonesian farmers passed down their expertise from one generation to the next, ensuring that the art of spice cultivation thrived. The farmers' techniques were rooted in tradition, utilizing age-old methods that respected the rhythms of nature. From selecting the perfect seedlings to nurturing the plants through careful irrigation 
and protecting them from pests, every step was carried out with precision and care. These farmers had a deep respect for the land they cultivated. They understood the delicate balance between giving and taking, working in harmony with nature rather than exploiting it. Their sustainable practices ensured the long-term viability of spice production, making Indonesia the epicenter of the spice trade. The spice farmers were not just skilled cultivators, they were also integral members of vibrant communities. They formed close-knit networks, sharing insights and supporting each other through the challenges of spice farming. Their strong sense of community played a significant role in the success of Indonesia's spice industry. As the European powers arrived in Indonesia, the local farmers played a crucial role in the spice trade. They became key intermediaries, trading their precious harvests with the European merchants who eagerly awaited their arrival. It was the dedication and expertise of these Indonesian farmers that propelled the archipelago to become the epicenter of the spice trade. Their mastery of spice cultivation, combined with their intricate knowledge of local ecosystems, made Indonesia the primary source of the world's most sought-after spices. Even amidst the tumultuous changes brought by the European powers, the Indonesian farmers remained steadfast guardians of tradition. Their commitment to preserving their ancestral knowledge ensured the continuity of spice cultivation and the cultural heritage it represented. When the European powers arrived in Indonesia, they encountered a rich tapestry of cultures and well-established trade networks. The interactions between the European traders and the diverse Indonesian communities would shape the dynamics of the spice trade. At the heart of this exchange were the Indonesian merchants, known as the Peranakan. These skilled intermediaries played a vital role in facilitating trade between Europe and the Indonesian archipelago. Their knowledge of local customs, languages and trade practices made them indispensable partners for the European traders. The Peranakan merchants were well versed in the intricacies of the spice trade. They navigated the complex web of Indonesian kingdoms, forging alliances and establishing trade relationships with local rulers. Their expertise in bartering, pricing and logistics ensured the smooth flow of spices from Indonesian plantations to European markets. The Peranakan merchants served as trusted guides, leading European traders through bustling spice markets. They introduced them to the vibrant sights, sounds and aromas of Indonesian marketplaces, where spices from across the archipelago were bought and sold. Beyond their role as traders, the Peranakan merchants provided valuable cultural insights to the European powers. They acted as cultural interpreters, helping to bridge the gap between the European traders and the local communities. Their understanding of Indonesian traditions, customs and social hierarchies proved invaluable in building rapport and fostering relationships. Through these interactions, a fusion of cultures emerged. European traders exchanged goods such as textiles, weapons and luxury items for the precious Indonesian spices. The trade networks expanded and a diverse array of products and ideas flowed between Europe and the Indonesian archipelago. The Peranakan merchants adapted to European business practices, learning about European currencies, weights and measures. They navigated the bureaucratic systems established by the European powers, ensuring compliance with trade regulations and facilitating efficient transactions. The Peranakan merchants acted as cultural ambassadors, sharing their knowledge of Indonesian arts, crafts and traditions with the European traders. This cultural exchange fostered a deeper understanding and appreciation of Indonesia's rich heritage, influencing European art, fashion and even culinary practices. Generation after generation, the Peranakan merchants passed down their trade secrets within their communities. They safeguarded their expertise, ensuring the continuity of their vital role in the spice trade and preserving the legacy of cultural exchange between Europe and Indonesia. The arrival of spice-laden ships in European ports sparked a frenzy. The allure of Indonesian spices became a symbol of wealth, luxury and power. Kings, queens and merchants clamoured for these exotic treasures, willing to pay exorbitant prices. As the magnificent spice-laden ships from Indonesia docked in European ports, they ignited a frenzy among the populace. 
These exotic treasures brought with them the scents and flavours that would forever change the European culinary landscape. The arrival of these ships laden with Indonesian spices sparked a sensation. The rich aroma of cloves, the pungent allure of nutmeg, and the fiery tang of pepper filled the air, captivating the senses of all who encountered them. The Indonesian spices quickly became a symbol of wealth, luxury and power. European nobles and merchants eagerly gathered around the opulent spice displays, vying for their share of these coveted treasures. Possessing Indonesian spices became a status symbol, an affirmation of one's social standing and sophistication. The rarity and exquisite quality of Indonesian spices elevated their value to unprecedented heights. European merchants meticulously weighed and packaged these precious commodities, ensuring their preservation and enhancing their allure. The Indonesian spices became indispensable ingredients in the extravagant banquets hosted by European aristocracy. Chefs and cooks experimented with the exotic flavours, creating culinary masterpieces that dazzled the palates of the privileged few. The distinct taste of Indonesian spices added an irresistible touch of opulence to every dish. The demand for Indonesian spices fueled a thriving spice trade within European markets. Bustling spice markets emerged, where traders bartered, negotiated and competed to secure their share of these precious commodities. The allure of Indonesian spices transformed the economic landscape, stimulating trade and driving innovation. Luxury shops showcased Indonesian spices in ornate containers, enticing the wealthy elite to indulge in their opulence. The spices became not just a culinary necessity, but also highly sought-after collectibles, treasured for their aesthetic appeal and symbolic significance. The fascination with Indonesian spices extended beyond the realm of cuisine. European monarchs adorned themselves with fragrant oils, perfumes and pomanders infused with the essence of these spices. They sought to surround themselves with the exotic and intoxicating scents that represented prosperity and refinement. The Indonesian spices also played a crucial role in diplomacy. European powers presented these precious commodities as diplomatic gifts, fostering alliances and securing favour. The exchange of spices became a symbolic gesture of friendship and goodwill between nations. The Indonesian spices not only added flavour to European dishes, but also shaped the global economy. The spice trade generated immense wealth, funded voyages of exploration, and spurred the growth of maritime powers. Indonesia's spices were at the center of a global web of commerce, forever altering the course of history. Stay tuned for part two of the untold history of the Indonesian spice trade. Make sure you subscribe to keep up to date on the latest episodes from Untold Histories.